What is up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode in our weekend review series, a series that was enabled by the Patreon backers, they donated money, and they get to a certain threshold, that means that new content gets generated, and this was the first of those such rewards, so if you wanted to get more, check them out on the Patreon, but this is the series where we hang out for a little while and we just talk about operating things, just, this is in general looking under the hood of the channel, and just making sure that everything's okay, kind of checking in on the health of the channel, where things are going, what's going on with me, what I like about the games that I'm playing right now, a little bit of behind the scenes information, if that's applicable, just to give you a little bit of a look inside my mindset with each game that we've been playing. Now, in general, I tend to be pretty good, I think personally, at talking about the things I do and don't like about games, so sometimes that leaves me with not very much to talk about during this series, but I do think there's a bunch of stuff we wanted to touch on today, so let's get to touching on it. First things first, Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human. This year, I think, is really turning out to be a banner year for indie games. We've had so many good indie games come out in the two weeks since the year has rolled over. Well, three weeks now, I guess. I lost track of time. It happens as you get... I've noticed I lose track of time all the time. That's like, as I get older, time goes faster and faster and faster. And it's so much more difficult to hold on to those little moments. But anyways... Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human is definitely endemic of that. We've had a very, very good indie season the last couple weeks, and I don't know if it's going to continue, because it seems like the release list is turning more triple A-ish. At the same time, Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human is one of the most enjoyable games I've played since probably two or three months now, as far as indie gaming goes. Very, very cool little game, which I liked a lot. Almost every single boss inside of that game showed a tremendous amount of care. I love the ambiance in the game, and just the way it holds itself and presents itself to the player. It's a very quiet, relaxing, yet at the same time panicking game. Every time you float around, you're just looking at stuff. You're learning about the way that the world has been destroyed before you got there, and then you're looking at political intrigues and things of that nature, and then all of a sudden they spring a boss on you, and it goes from very, very humdrum, and almost kind of like a call dullness, a relaxing dullness, to a panicked fever pitch within a moment's notice, and I like the game a whole lot. Controls are really, really fantastic, and honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed that it hasn't gotten more press than it has. It was a game that I really expected to burst onto the scene, just like explode out and have lots of people into it, and at the same time, it just seems like it's floated under the radar. It's such an odd thing when you cover indie games. It's hard to tell. It really sincerely is. I feel like a lot of games come out that are really fantastic and then they're sitting there a year after their initial release with five positive reviews on Steam and nobody's played it. And so I wanted to do my part by showing the game off. I played the first couple hours and was absolutely just ensorcelled by the whole thing. I liked it a lot. It had me under its spell. And so I found that as far as promoting games go, because if you really think about it, that's what my channel is. I guess that's how people look at me anyways professionally is they're like, well, what do you do on your channel? You play games, yeah, but you're providing, I guess, a little bit of advertisement for those games, so I'm giving them a little bit of publicity. And I think the temptation for a lot of YouTubers is when a game does not do well on your channel, you just try to pump and dump it as fast as you can. That's standard operating procedure. So you'll pitch a game, you'll play it for a little while, and if it doesn't do well, like your audience just isn't into it, now your goal is to like shove it off stage as fast as possible and then come out with a new series that will maybe get more people involved. Because if you don't do that, it sets a weird... It's It's... You know, at the end of the day, this is a job for a lot of people, myself included. And so there's always the temptation to do that. And with Aquatic Adventure The Last Human, I didn't think that everybody would like it. But at the same time, the game was so good that I wanted to finish it on the channel. So I apologize for the gap. The reason I explain that is because I'm not quitting Aquatic Adventure of The Last Human. The reason for the gap in content is because I couldn't beat a boss. I got stuck on him for a day or two. And I sat down planning on recording that day. And after I banged my head against the boss for like 10 minutes, I was like, yeah. I better record something else, and then I'll do this in my free time, and I'll do it in post-production. Basically, I'll post-commentate it, and it'll all be perfectly fine. But doing this as live commentary, mm, I don't, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it at like 2 in the morning in my free time, because this is going to eat up my workspace. So Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human should be concluding. Actually, the day that this video goes up should be the last episode of the Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human, if my planning was correct. Very, very cool game. The ending was a little bit what I expected. It was kind of cliche, but this was not like a narrative game anyways. This was very much sort of a Metroidvania kind of... It's, it's hard to actually tell. It's definitely an open-world action-adventure game with a little bit of Metroid and a little bit of Zelda in there. But at the same time, the strings that it grabs from those games are thin enough to where you can't really classify it as that game itself. And so it, it's such a cool little amalgam of random genres. I really do highly recommend it. If you're into action-adventure free-roaming games, if you like games like Metroid, or if you like games like Zelda, it's just a smaller version. The only downside to the game, I would say, is that it's only a couple hours long. You can beat the game in one sitting. I think I have six episodes that are about 30 minutes long. It took me about three hours altogether. And that was banging my head against some of the harder bosses, because that's the real stopgap that you're going to hit. 
Still, all around, you're cheating yourself if you don't play the game. It always blows my mind that some games seem to get never-ending press, even though they're kind of, like, mediocre as far as gameplay goes. Like, they might have a very good storyline, but the game itself is just what we've seen for the past 10 years over and over and over again. I like what Aquatic Adventure is, and it, it saddens me. So anyways, if you haven't checked it out, by all means, you should definitely get your hands wet with it. If you're into any of the types of games that I mentioned, you won't be disappointed. Especially if you're into things like Titan Souls or like super difficult games. There are some nasty bosses in Aquatic Adventure. They're just like, God, it requires such perfect movements and focus that it's definitely a game for tryhards sometimes. Punch Club! Punch a cha-cha-cha club. We're going to keep that one going until we beat it. We've reached... At the time of this video, I've reached the point where the game starts to get grindy. The end game in Punch Club is very, very grindy. And unfortunately, I can't really do much about that. That's just the way that the game goes. I love the game. I think that Punch Club is yet again another one of those surprise indie games that took me by surprise, caught me with a haymaker when I wasn't looking and when I wasn't ready. Everything, the pixel art is absolutely fantastic. I loved the music. The fact that the game only has like two songs and it plays them the entire time that you're playing the game and yet it still gets stuck in your head and you don't get sick of it, I think that speaks volumes to how cool the music is in the game. The storyline isn't much to write home about, but the gameplay itself is utterly fascinating because I think they struck the perfect balance between hands-on and hands-off. You can affect the stats and you can affect the abilities, which gives you some limited control over the way that your fights go down. Simultaneously, sometimes randomness takes over and fights just take a weird turn where you're just like, ugh, that's not what I expected. Why are you doing this? All right, let's try and switch up our strategy a little bit to avoid him doing that because that is not okay. And so I think that's what got so many people, there's a little bit of gambling in there. I think that's what got, that's what's got so many people entranced with the game. It's still peaking out on Twitch TV right now, it's still very, very popular on the channel. I probably won't be making it go anywhere anytime soon because all of our other series seem to be a little bit slow. But Punch Club is like that series that's keeping us afloat right now. And I enjoy playing it, so it's like check in the box, check in the box, let's keep it running. I think that people are going to run into problems as we get further into the game because it does get grindy as hell. Once you get to like the final spacing, when you're into like the final five fights, it can be a little bit long-winded. But other than that, I've liked the game a ton. I love all the little storylines that you can go into. The references are all over the place. And for somebody that really enjoys like early 90s, late 80s, and kind of middle 90s pop culture, the game has like all of it. If you're a fan of action movies, fighting movies, if you're into just about anything, if you were alive in between 1985 and 2000, they've probably got at least a half dozen references for you. And I really, really, really like that about it. So, that's about all I have to say about Punch Club for right now. I think we've probably got about 10 to 15 more episodes left in us. If I include the grind, if I remove the grind, then probably only 4 or 5 more episodes. I'll probably leave it in because see, people seem to like the workout segments. So, I'll leave those where they are. But aside from that, I'm more or less happy with that series right now. I'm more or less happy with the game. There was little things that bothered me about it, but the developers have stepped in. They've patched them. They've taken care of the balance issue, so strength is viable. Agility is viable. Now all they got to do is tune up the way of the turtle. And I think the game will all around be a really, really fantastic experience or an experience that I could recommend to everybody. On With regards to the pricing, I want to talk about the pricing with Punch Club for a minute because a lot of people have been upset about the fact that it's $10 or actually how much is it right here? I can actually check. How much is Punch Club on Steam right now? There's a bit of a disconnect right now on the internet. I've seen a lot of people complaining about it, how Punch Club is $5 on the phone, and on Steam it is $9.99. Some people have been upset about that, so I wanted to explain that briefly, why that works the way that it works, because there's actually a logic here. The problem is, is that the phone market is oversaturated. There are games everywhere on the phone market, and a price point above like $3.99 on the phone is considered to be like ridiculous. So on the PC, people are more willing to pay $9.99. You can't price your game too cheaply on the PC, otherwise you'll get a negative backlash. People think that it's a cheap, worthless game and they just won't buy it in the first place because they'll see the low price. I read a whole article on Kotaku about this. I think it was on Kotaku. It might have been somewhere else. But essentially, the pricing for mobile versus the pricing for Steam are completely different in order to be competitive. With Steam, you've got to keep it kind of in like an $8 to $10 region so that people think that it has value, but at the same time, it's not too expensive so as to cut out potential buyers. But on the phone, you have to push the price lower just to compete with all the other little Kairosoft management games and stuff like that that are available. Otherwise, nobody will buy your game because by mobile standards, it's overpriced. And so try to keep that in mind. I've seen a lot of complaints about it, and honestly, that's more of a marketing sort of business-savvy decision that they've made. You have to. The pricing has to be different, otherwise it kind of won't compete on the phone. There's been a lot of documented things from indie developers where they price their things the exact same way on Steam 
and they price it the same way on the phone, and then it just tanks on the phone because the price is too high, and nobody cares about it. They're like, oh, well, I'm not going to buy that thing because who buys a $10 phone game, you know what I mean? Whereas if you push the price lower on Steam in order to match the mobile price, then people on Steam are like, oh, it's a chintzy cheap game, and they walk away and they don't even look at it. And so it's very, very interesting when it comes down to pricing games how you also have to look at psychology, and you have to do kind of a little bit of market analysis in order to make things right and find you know the equal balance for both sides. And so I would say to people making those complaints, just keep that in mind that there's a lot of ways that potential buyers psych themselves out of purchasing a game psychologically before it goes in based on the platform and also on the sales platform, I guess like the machine platform and the sales platform that it's on. I'm not really sure what terminology to use right there. I'm not educated enough. So I just wanted to talk about that at the end. We have shabba ba bee 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 ba bee ba bee ba bee keep. Shabba pee 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 keep. I am not so sure about shabba pee 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 keep. People still enjoying it. I still like playing the game. It's still a fun game. I think it's getting a little repetitive. I think you kind of do the same stuff every day and fiddle around with things. I'd like to get to the point. I don't want to cut it off just yet. We have so many things going on that it's tough though. There's so many things going on at the channel. There's so many things that I want to cover and play right now because it's definitely the beginning of the year where you want to hit as many things as possible to make up for the fact that like the last six months have been super dead in gaming. So I've been barely hanging on by a thread the last six months. And so now there's just like a glut of games coming out. And I'm trying to make up for lost time by working those long hours and doing as many things as possible while the getting is good. So anyways, it's Shabba Bee 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 Keep. I like it. I like the game. It's a lot of fun. I think it's a game that's more fun to play by yourself than it is to play for an audience. But simultaneously, I think that it's getting a little repetitive for me as far as channel content goes. There's starting to be a lack of things for me to commentate on. And so I've noticed the commentary keeps getting more and more outlandish and less and less video game involved. And so whenever that happens, I feel like I'm getting desperate and I'm reaching for topics to talk about. And I don't like being like that. Like, if it comes up naturally during the course of conversation, I'm okay with it. But when in my head I'm consciously thinking about ways to non-sequitur into something else because the gameplay is uninteresting, that's when I start to get worried about a series. And so I've got, I think, six or seven more episodes recorded for it. I'll probably let those fly. We'll see how things go. We've got Tomb Raider coming out. We've got Hitman coming out. There's a bunch of AAA titles that I at least wanted to dabble with for a little bit and see if I could have a good time with them. I like that the channel's at the size right now to where I can do AAA stuff and we can still have a good time. But some of the little stuff along the way, I may just kind of touch and go on. Shop and Peep, I think I've said my piece about it. I think two weeks ago we were still playing the game. I like the game a lot. If you were wondering what was going on for the game and why it was taken down off the Steam market, it's a little bit of drama behind that. I guess the development team was fighting over who owns the game. The same thing that happens with music happens with video games. And they were having some kind of dispute over who owned the game as far as copyright goes. That has now been resolved and the game is up for sale again. So it wasn't them stopping development. It wasn't anything going wrong with copyright. Somebody suing them for stealing their game idea or anything like that. It was actually just the developers among themselves were arguing about who got what cut of what profits. And so they took it down off the market so that there wouldn't be like legal liabilities or anything while they were getting it all sorted out on the lawyer end. It's all done now. It's all taken care of. So I think you can get the game again. In fact, I've got the menu up right here. I can actually tell you 100% whether or not you'll be able to buy the game over the course of the next week. We'll go to the store page. And yes, indeed, it's back up for sale for $7. So... They seem to have gotten that nice and sorted out. So if you wanted to get shop up a beep 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 but you haven't had the opportunity because they took it down off of Steam for a little while, it's now back up. It looks like all the legal issues have been taken care of on the developer's side. So Steam has obliged to put it back up. Beards are itchy. I'm growing a beard right now. My beard is hard to see because it's like blonde and red. It's weird because I have dark colored hair up top and it doesn't match the beard. My beard is red and blonde and my hair is dark colored. It's because my mom is blonde, my dad is dark haired, and then on both sides of the families there's gingers who have recessive genes throwing things in there too. Like grandparents on both sides have ginger hair and so it's just like, Aah! it's like every hair color is assailing me at once all over my body. I'm like a rainbow, I'm like, I'm like a weird earth tone rainbow all over my body, it's ridiculous. Dying Light, the press preview. How are you guys feeling about Dying Light, the following, right? Is that car not awesome or what? The only downside to the preview that I have right now, I've enjoyed everything that I've seen so far. Everything was exactly at the AAA level that I would expect. The voice acting is cool. The storyline so far has jumped me on in. I'm back again working with factions, fighting with zombies, stabbing dudes in bullet vests and raiders and stuff like that. Having a really good time with it. The only downside to the preview is that it doesn't save. So every time I turn the game off and come back, I have to redo like an hour's worth of content. I've been doing it at night. I Before I go to bed, I'll redo all the content and then I'll just leave the game running so that when I get up in the morning, I can start recording right off the 
the bat right from where I wanted to be. But other than that, it's a press demo that they cut specifically just for a couple of YouTubers. And so I will take the inability to save as just kind of like a thing I've got to work around because they didn't have to do this at all. And I'm tremendously thankful for it. So I wanted to go on the record here in my video and say thank you to the development team for giving me an opportunity. They actually emailed me and they were like, yeah, dude, we watched your videos of your original Dying Light series and we loved it. We were absolutely in love with like the videos. We watched them. We all laughed around them at our consoles, at our workspaces. So we wanted to send you this press demo that's only going out to certain people. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I don't get a lot of handouts like that here at the channel. Like developers so rarely give me a chance. And it's so nice to have somebody be like, we like what you do. I don't know. I feel like there's a disconnect between YouTubers and developers. Like sometimes I feel like developers really don't like YouTubers. And then other times there are developers that seem to do everything they can to grease the relationship between the two groups. I guess it's split up into two camps. Some developers think of us as leeches and then some developers think of us as a promotional opportunity. And then other developers just think of us as people and they like our content and you know, it's nice to be given a shot like that. And so anyways, I tremendously have been enjoying the demo. I don't know how many episodes I'm going to do because the content is kind of limited. They did give you a big map to fiddle around in. Like seriously, there's a lot of stuff around to do on the map space that they gave you, but it's all kind of non-linear, just random objectives to do like climbing stuff, finding trophies and things of that nature. I did five episodes just to like have something out there for people to watch. When the last episode goes up, I'm going to take a look at the comments. Make sure you leave comments on that video. Let me know because I wasn't sure what the reception to it was going to be. If I should just leave it like a small preview series or if I should go all in and do like 50 episodes of it so anyway leave me your thoughts you can leave them here too and I'll try and take a look at them leave your thoughts on the last episode dying light number five was the last one I recorded so when that goes up I think I did a shout out in the video as well just to be like hey let me know what you think do you want the preview to keep going on or you know have you seen enough for right now to wet your whistle until the actual expansion itself comes out and then we can jump straight into that later on and we can do a series on just the expansion once February comes around because I think it comes out on like the 13th or the 14th or something like that. We should be doing a following series, I hope. I'm going to sit down and level a character in Dying Light to get ready and go into it. I don't think I have my old Dying Light character unless it's Steam Cloud synced. If it's synced with the Steam Cloud, I can actually take a look at that right here. I've got my console up and everything ready to go. But yeah, if, it, if it's synced with the Steam Cloud, then it'll probably be fine. I, I wouldn't even worry about it. Yeah, it is synced with the Steam Cloud. So we might be able to take our old character and just start up from where we left off. That'd be perfectly acceptable, and I'd be okay with it. That actually saved me a bunch of work, too. We should be doing a following series, unless something goes horrifically wrong. Crashlands! Crashlands, a little on the fence about it. Seems like there's a small minority at the Nerdcastle that really like the series. I think that Crashlands is a fantastic game, and the reception has been kind of strange from my end. I expected Crashlands to be like one of those big, explosive games of the season, and... It just was kind of a non-starter. I was a little surprised. I, I thought Crashlands was going to be like the game, dude. Like, it's a funny game that's got really good mechanics. Once again, it's kind of got the same thing going on that I had with Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human, where it just uh, it doesn't seem to be getting the attention in the press that I thought it would get. And so, interestingly enough, I did the series on Crashlands, and it seems to be kind of lukewarm for most people. If that's the case, I have no problem kind of sweeping it off. That's a shame, though, because I like the game a lot. Crashlands is a really, really cool game. The sense of humor is fantastic. I like how it's an action RPG. I think that a lot of the complaints that people are leveling towards Crashlands are unfair. I've seen a lot of people calling it Don't Starve 2.0 or, like, Don't Starve Light, and that's not a fair comparison. It's an action RPG Diablo-type game with building. It's not a survival game. It's a crafting game first and foremost. It has nothing to do, you don't have to feed yourself, you don't have to drink water or do any of that kind of stuff. You just build stuff and then you fight monsters and you raise them a la Pokemon. And so I don't know why people are making those comparisons. I can only say that they must be tremendously short-sighted or they must just have an inherent desire to label things in order to discredit them. But I don't understand those complaints at all. And that's been one of the biggest problems that Crashlands has had to overcome in my mind. Comparisons to comparisons to Don't Starve, which is strange because the games are nothing alike each other. The games are completely distinct in every way. Very, very surprising thing. Still, having a good time with the game. I'll probably keep cutting episodes just because I like it. And then we'll probably casually sort of shuffle it off stage once other things come around. For right now, we've got about two weeks until the next release season comes out. So I have no problem running a couple series that are not fan favorites as long as I like them for a little while. It doesn't bother me at all. I, I like the game, and so obviously it's probably going to stick around for a little while longer. Still, I promise you probably, if you like action RPG games and you like raising monsters and stuff like that, you probably won't dislike the game. It's also got a wicked sense of humor to go along with that. And so hopefully, I don't know, hopefully it gets a lot of loving in the future. I'm trying, I'm really trying to 
to pump some of these indie games up, but it's weird. It's a very, very weird thing. I think it's just because there's too many indie games now, and so people just don't want to filter through them all anymore. The indie game genre has grown so exponentially in the last three years. I remember when indie games were a novelty when I first started out on YouTube, and now it's just like you can't turn your head on Steam without 10 new games coming out for $4.99. And I, I think that's the main problem. It's very, very difficult to filter through them all just because there's so many indie games. But there are good ones out there. There are definitely good ones out there. And I try to do my best to show them off as time goes along. Whether or not I'm successful in that regard remains to be seen. But hopefully I'm a little bit of a help to developers. Crashlands is going... I really, really like Crashlands. It's the full package. It's one of those games that you could do a lot worse with your 10 bucks. You know, you could do way, way worse. Last week we had Evertown as our gameplay impressions. Very, very cool little game that I'm hoping will get updated quickly. I, I like the game and I want to play it more. It's purely for selfish reasons. I want it to be updated more rapidly so that I can play it more. It was kind of a surprise... I don't know, that review's gotten a lot of views. That was a strange thing for me. I don't expect things to get a lot of views a lot of the time. I kind of expect most things to tank, and then every now and again when they go well, I'm like, ooh! See, I'm the kind of person that expects the worst so that my, so that my expectations are never undercut. I always expect the worst to happen with everything, so that I'm never disappointed. I'll be like, yeah, well, I called it. And then when good things happen, you get to be like, woohoo! And you get to celebrate about it. I find that that's where life is the least traumatic. I never hope for the best. This week, today, along with this video, you should have had Fear Equation go up, which is a new game by Screwfly. Very, very cool little title. If you like any of Screwfly's other games, Zafe House Diaries or Dead Knot, you should absolutely check it out. It is every bit as good as their previous games. It's a little bit different, but at the same time, it's a little bit of the same. In fact, I'd say it's a combination of Zafe House and Dead Knot with a little bit of political intrigue added in. It's a cool little game, and I highly recommend it. I think it's a very solid little title, so check out my impressions video of that if you haven't as of right now. I think that's just about the end of our conversational topics for today in the weekend review. Things that are coming up in the future mostly just there's not a lot of indie titles coming up I think most of the things that I'm looking forward to right now are going to be we've got hitman coming out we've got 10 minute barbarian coming out we've got I think Tomb Raider coming out which I'm pretty excited about so we'll see how that all goes we may or may not do a series about them but those are the things that I'm looking at and that I'm excited about after that, we've got a couple of weeks of just, like, nothing going on. Most of the stuff that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks, I'm more than likely just going to do impressions videos of. Not really full series or anything like that. Overfall's looking pretty good, but, meh. For the next couple of weeks, there's not a ton of stuff going on, so we'll see what happens. I'll try to keep my ear to the ground. We will have a lot of series. We're going to be continuing because there's so many things going on. Don't expect series to have, like, 25 episodes. We're probably just going to do a little 5, 10 episode series on things and just be shotgunning out little partial series of a whole bunch of stuff. And that'll be it. So now that I've kept you appraised, thank you for supporting me on Patreon and enabling this series. If you want to enable more video logs and series, go to Patreon, and you can contribute through there. You can see all the little things that you can cause to happen. Thank you for stopping on by, and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks with our next episode of The Weekend Review. Bye, everybody.